Welcome back, guys. In the previous lectures, we have talked about ambiguous grammars and mentioned some reasons why the grammar can be ambiguous. In particular, this may happen when we don't enforce correct precedents, right? When, uh, for example, plus operator suddenly got higher precedent than the uh, multiplication operator. And also when we have the same precedence, uh, this may happen when we don't enforce correct associativity of operators, right? Uh, for example, the minus operator is left associative. Now, today's video will be mainly practical. Uh, we will test all the theory we have learned so far uh, on practice, and we'll be using the uh, syntax tool, which is a parser generator, which will allow writing us grammar of our language and producing a parser. And uh, once again, in the previous lecture, uh, we showed how we can enforce these two principles, uh, right? We used uh, the layers of non-terminals and also enforced uh, needed associativity. And once again, today's lecture will be devoted to the introduction of the syntax tool. And also we will actually start building uh, a parser for our language. And uh, we will see how syntax helps us here. Now, in the first lecture, we said that parsers can be uh, either handwritten or automatically generated. Right, there are multiple algorithms which have been studied for a long time. Uh, don't worry for now about all this LL, LR, etc. We will cover all this in detail. Uh, but for now, we just need to say that one of the practical algorithms is LALR, uh, which allows parsing in one pass, that is uh, scanning a string only once from left to right, and uh, without using any recursion. Right, It will be fast table-driven parser. Once again, we'll be using the syntax tool, uh, which you can find at this URL. And it is a language agnostic parser generator. What is language agnostic? This means we can define a grammar once and then generate parsers for multiple target architectures uh, uh, for multiple target languages. Right? It might be for JavaScript, for Python, for Rust, and uh, many other plugins exist. Now, with this being said, please meet Letter. Right? For those of you who have followed the Essentials of Interpretation class, know that we've been implementing the language which is called EVA, and a letter will be basically another language, uh, which might be a front-end for the EVA virtual machine, for the EVA interpreter, right? So letter specifically is a syntax for a very similar programming language, which both supports functional programming and object-oriented programming. And here's the example how the letter syntax will look like. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see the S expression format, which we've been using in EVA interpreter, and uh, on the right hand side, you can see the letter syntax. And in the previous lectures, we said that the parsing process is divided into two stages. And these are tokenizer, that is the lexical analysis, and the actual parser or syntactic analysis. And we also said that for tokenizer, we're going to use the regular expression notation. Right? It is possible to extract all stream of tokens from a string using just regular expressions. However, the regular expressions are not enough for the actual parser, and as we've been discussing, we'll be using Bakosnauer form or BNF to, dis uh, to define the actual language. And with this being said, I'm going to switch to the implementation. Uh, so I'm going to create a directory for our project, letter. And as we said, we start with the grammar for our language, so I'm going to create a directory uh, grammar and specifically letter.bnf in the grammar directory. Okay, let me switch to the editor. And so let's just start writing the same grammar uh, we have discussed in the previous lecture for mathematical expressions. And we need to say that in syntax, all the grammars start with a double percent sign. And I'm taking the same grammar we've been discussing in the previous lecture. That is, uh, our starting symbol is E, which can be E plus T. And as you can see, we can use the raw tokens directly in the BNF. And in this case, they should be uh, put in quotes, like in, th in this case, this plus uh, sign, like this plus operator. So the E might be E plus T, exactly from our previous lecture, uh, or T. Right? As we agreed, we go into separate each BNF rule with a semicolon. So I put semicolon and define the next rule for T. T stands for term here for multiplication, and T might be the same T times F or F, where F stands for factor and defines uh, the simple number, the primary expression. So this is our grammar. Uh, if this looks unfamiliar, please take a look at the previous lecture where we discussed this in detail, how we obtained this grammar. And as we said, this is exactly an ambiguous grammar for mathematical expressions, uh, which accepts expressions such as uh, 3 plus 2 times 5. And uh, now let's take a look at this number token. Right? In contrast with the plus and times operators, which are raw tokens and can be defined directly 
using just quotes. Uh, the number is something, a group of tokens, right? It defines all the numbers, as we said, not just a specific number. So in this case, we're going to use a tokenizer, as we've been discussing in the uh, previous lecture. And uh, syntax tool allows us defining both syntactic grammar and lexical grammar in the same file. Uh, but there's also ability to extract lexer or lexical grammar into a separate file. For now, let's just define them uh, all here, so it's easier to see where the tokens come from. Okay, so I'm separating the syntactic grammar uh, from the lexical grammar. And the lexical block is defined in these delimiters, lex and uh, closing lex. Okay, and once again, each grammar starts with a double percent sign. Uh, after each, we can define uh, our rules. So for numbers, it's very simple, right? It's a simple regular expression, slash D, which stands for digit, and the plus here means repeated one or more times. And for now, we'll be using just simple numbers, uh, but as an assignment, you can add support for the uh, float points number, just extending this regular expression. Okay, good. So we have the grammar, but the grammar itself doesn't mean anything if we don't have a special tool which can process this grammar and produce our working parser. And such tools are called parser generators. As we already said, we'll be using the syntax tool, so I'm going to switch to the terminal and just install it from npm. And npm is the package manager for Node.js. Please address the documentation how to install npm if it's not installed on your machine. Uh, the specific module is called syntax CLI. That is the command line utility for the syntax package. So let's take a look at the help of the syntax. And yes, as we can see here, it accepts the grammar as the file. So let's do this right away. Let's pass the grammar and point to our letter.bnf, which was just created. Uh, for now, like I said, let's use the LALR mode. Um, which is the most practical in this case. And let's just go ahead and parse the first expression. Uh, for example, the simple number, let's say two. And voila, that accepted, which means our grammar completely able to accept such numbers. And again, this comes from the tokenizer, which recognize all the simple numbers and propagate it through the grammar rules to the simple number. Okay, let's try something else, two plus two. And yes, here we get some first problem. Now, the parser tells us unexpected token space, and that's exactly correct. In fact, spaces or white spaces are not even handled in our tokenizer yet, so let's go ahead and add support. Now, most of the languages just uh, skip white spaces altogether. Let's follow the same approach. Now, um, if we met a white space in the tokenizer and the rule for the white space is slash s plus, we're just going to omit token type altogether, uh, which means syntax will not be handling these tokens at all. Right, so we're going to skip white spaces. And this is how easy to add support for white spaces. And so let's go back and try again. And yes, now it's accepted. So congratulations, we already started to have a more or less working parser, which can accept mathematical expressions. Now, at this point, we don't build any intermediate representations such as abstract syntax trees or anything. For now, we're just testing the grammar and the parser and see whether it accepts our strings. Okay, so our grammar works. We have restructured it to be unambiguous, and our parser can perfectly accept the strings. Uh, but now let's actually see how syntax can be helpful in determining whether our grammar is ambiguous uh, or we need to do something else with it. So let's actually take uh, the first grammar we had uh, in the initial lecture, uh, which was very simple, but as we said, it was completely ambiguous and actually didn't work. So it was e plus e, e times e, or just number. Right, super easy grammar, but let's see that it's actually not working grammar. And if we try to parse the same string, 2 plus 2 plus 2, we get something which is called shift reduce conflict. Now, what is shift reduce conflict? We will learn in the next lectures in the greater detail. Uh, for now, we can skip this terminology and just see uh, that syntax was able to determine that this grammar is not working. And in fact, there is also some options in the syntax CLI, such as table uh, or validation. Uh, which can help uh, seeing us that, yes, there are some problems with our grammar. So let's take a look. And as you can see in the states number five and six, we see something in red uh, that is reduce and shift, reduce and shift. That is exactly the shift reduce conflict, uh, which tells that this grammar actually is not working. Now, the two reasons why this grammar is ambiguous is that we don't enforce here correct precedence of operators and don't enforce correct uh, associativity of operators. The way we fix it by explicitly defining plus to be left associative and by explicitly defining that times operator has higher precedence than the plus operator. Well, in fact, syntax has the full support uh, of defining it as just a meta information. 
right? Now we can educate syntax that the plus operator should be left associative. And this is how we write it. The times operator is also left associative. So we write it uh, the same going after the plus operator. And so this is also an interesting feature. The fact that we wrote the times operator going after the plus uh, makes the times operator having the higher precedence than the plus operator. And this is actually all we need to fix this ambiguous grammar and to turn it into unambiguous. Right? Under the hood, it's exactly the same what we did uh, manually here. But this grammar might be even easier to read. Uh, it has smaller parsing table. And uh, let's just take a look. Execute again. And yes, as you can see, all the shift reduce conflicts are gone. And now this grammar is actually unambiguous. And which again shows that parser generator might be smart enough to figure out uh, how it needs to structure uh, underlying implementation if we provide some information for the associativity or precedence. Okay. And again, if we remove the meta information about the correct precedence and correct associativity, we again see the same exact issue. This grammar has actually the following conflicts, right? And this is exactly the shift reduce conflict. Again, don't worry about this magic word shift reduce. We will cover it in greater detail. For now, just pure practice showing that uh, capabilities of the syntax tool and of uh, partial generators in general. So once again, we can actually continue using this grammar, right? E plus E, E times E. Uh, but in this class, I want to make it more explicit. Uh, so we're going to use this explicit grammar instead. And at this point, let's start switching to more mature uh, grammar names. Let's use it the same as it used in other programming languages and to replace this E with additive expression, uh, right? Given more descriptive name. And by the way, this is exactly how it's called, for example, in uh, JavaScript programming language, right? If you open specification for uh, JavaScript, you will find this additive expression defined exactly like this, right? The factor becomes with a descriptive name multiplicative expression, and uh, the number will be held by the primary expression, right? Something very basic, which has the highest precedence. Now to reiterate, the closer non-terminal is to the starting symbol, the lower precedence it has, right? The starting symbol here is additive expression, uh, which means the multiplication has higher precedence and primary has even higher precedence. Okay, once again, let's see that this grammar doesn't have any conflicts. As you can see, syntax was able to pick our new names uh, and we'll be continue with that grammar. Okay, so what else can we add? Uh, for example, the grouping expression, right? In fact, if we put a group in parentheses, this expression uh, will have completely different semantics, right? In this case, two plus two times two would become eight uh, instead of six. And as you can see, it's currently not supported because we don't handle the parentheses. And so this will be your first assignment for today. Uh, please go ahead and implement the group in parentheses. And inside those parentheses will, might be any expression, right? It might be simple number or uh, as two plus two in this case, or two times two. Uh, just a small hint, this uh, group in parentheses should have the same precedence as the primary expression. And we will cover the solution in the next lecture. Okay, so that's it for today. Please go ahead and take a look at this grammar again. In the next lecture, we'll continue extending this language and we'll come back to the theory uh, and uh, we'll be gradually adding support for other operations here. Okay, thanks and see you in the class.